I am opening the August 24th, 2020 Board of Health meeting at 6.06 p.m. Uh, and uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, tonight's meeting is being handled um, via Zoom. And uh, the Zoom meeting ID was uh, placed in the agenda in the minutes, uh, excuse me, in the minutes, um, in the agenda and public and made public for uh, anyone to join. Uh, my name is Caitlin Rock and I am the chair. And today, oh, we, today we have uh, Bruce Bennett and Ken Couche as uh, for the uh, Board of Health present. And we also have the housing health agent uh, and the the health agent, um, Steve and Gina, as well as um, the health, Board of Health Administrative Assistant. First thing up, we have um, an appointment with uh, Mr. Ken O'Neill regarding food service at the O's in Sunderland. So, good evening. <laughs> good evening. Now, um, Mr. O'Neill, I've been following, uh, I, I did, I think, participate in a few of the emails. Okay. Um, and I've been following the, um, the requests. And uh, first and foremost, I want to let you know that we are, um, we are very sensitive to it and we know exactly um, what's going on and um, why you why you are suffering and we feel very very badly yeah. um, about what's That's going on um, why don't you state for uh, you know because I don't know how much uh, Mr. Bennett or uh, Mr. Kushai know um, as far as the history is going on uh, what's what's been going on with you and the O's? Okay. Um, do you want me to start with my background and then the background of the O's, or do you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, well, my background um, is primarily in restauranting. Uh, currently, I'm the general manager of Johnny's Roadside Diner in Hadley, Mass. Uh, been doing management, um, managing restaurants for the past approximately 18, 19 years. Um, so that's my, my background. I went to Eisenberg School of Management as well. Um, have all the necessary uh, certifications uh, to do and be a GM um, of a restaurant. So I also obviously own the O's in Sunderland and uh, am looking to bring and have been ever since uh, acquiring it food into uh, the O's. Uh, obviously, now being um, where we are, it's imperative to get food into the O's to be able to obviously stay afloat. Um, and, you know, I, for one, am a big fan of um, Hot Table in Hadley and it's uh, paninis and salads and soups. Um, so that's kind of the, the, where I was trying to focus my time uh, going forward. I think it's a good option. I think it's something that uh, as younger uh, people start moving into the new places in, in and around Sunderland, um, that would be something that they would want. I also plan to serve food late at night, which uh, is not something any other place in the area that I'm aware of besides Waitley Diner is currently doing. Um, so I think that also would be a, a good option for the town and also obviously for the area and community. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> so that that's great. And, you know, I, I would love to have another restaurant 
in town. Um, so you, I know that, um, so if you are a manager of a restaurant, then you know that um, uh, that would require, you know, a, um, a, a, a restaurant plan, um, a kitchen, you know, uh, it, it needs to be a restaurant. Yep. You already have, I guess, you have the alcohol license because yep. it's a bar right now. Um, I also, yes. I do also have a, a, a food permit. Um, the town, from my understanding, is a, not a state, but a town thing that uh, they put the restrictions on the said food permit, obviously, because I don't have a kitchen. Well, right. It's not really a food permit. It says but, food permit. Well, it's, it's a permit to sell packaged, um, prepackaged snacks. Yeah, I, it, 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 I, it's, it's not a restaurant permit. It's not. Yeah, well, it, it is a, a, a common Vic license and, and a food permit. That's what I have. Um, you know, obviously, I don't know what needs to be changed. This is my first time doing this. Um, and I uh, was, you know, really trying to figure it out and get some guidance because obviously I want to proceed forward with it. Right. Well, I was, I was um, CC on all the emails that um, Mr. Ball sent you. Yep. I mean, he gave you pretty detailed guidance. So um, if Steve, you want to explain again what needs to happen. So uh, essentially what you would need to do is convert from being a bar to being a restaurant. So instead of a bar where somebody might be able to buy a sandwich and, you know, stop off for a couple beers on the way home from work and get a sandwich, you would then become a place where people would come for dinner and maybe have a drink with their, with their meal. So that's essentially what my understanding is of your conversion process. And in order to do that, you would need to construct a commercial kitchen within the premises and have that approved by uh, the Board of Health before proceeding. And then menus, of course, have to be approved as well. Yep. Now keep in mind, this if, if this were ordinary times, we would not be talking about this. This is to get you open during this phase by the governor. Well, I mean, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, obviously, this uh, makes it more pressing. Uh, being sure. Currently, you know, there's a lot of money that just is going out the window. Absolutely. Every month, and there's not even a red cent coming through the door. Um, you know, and I have been to places that are technical bars, obviously not in Sunderland because I'm the only entity in Sunderland that is considered a, a bar. Um, but I am, you know, definitely looking to offer some solid food options. Um, as far as, you know, what I'm classified as or, you know, how to make that happen, I, I don't have all those answers. I'm trying to just make it happen uh, and get there sooner than later because I don't know how long this thing's going to drag on and if if it lasts another year or another six months or another, who knows where we're going to be, you know, I mean, I have, that's a lot of money that's just going out the window and there's nothing coming in. I know. And our, the problem is, uh, sure, Bruce, go ahead. I, I just got a, a question to Steve is how big of a commercial kitchen does he have to have Steve? If he's going to like serve just paninis and soup and something like that, does it have to be a full blown kitchen or can he have a, a sink and, you know, the panini cooker and the soup cooker? I mean, does it have to, how big does it have to be? So size is relative. The food code, um, people often say it's really about having the right number of sinks in your, in your establishment. You wouldn't have to have a three bay sink for wash, rinse, and sanitize, you'd have to have a prep sink, a mop sink, plus hand washing sinks, and then you would have to have whatever uh, cooking equipment you would need for preparing your food, as well as hot and cold holding and storage. So um, you, know, you can put that 
<laughs> you can put all of that sometimes in a food truck. Um, if you've got a commercial kitchen base, which I would not recommend for uh, the O's, but uh, you know, you can, do, you can do all of that on a small scale in two or 300 square feet. So uh, go ahead. When, he, when the seven O's originally was built, because I used to go there quite a bit, um, they did have a commercial kitchen in the back. You know, I, I think there's uh, pool tables there or something. And, and I don't know what happened to it. It got removed at some point in time. Um, and I don't know whether the plumbing's still there or whatever. Yeah. The, the plumbing, from my understanding, is still there. Um, there was a wall that was removed. And, um, you know, that would be the area that I would be looking to uh, put this in, obviously. Um, you know, eventually I, I wanted to do a big uh, addition onto the building once uh, I do purchase the real estate. That's my end game and end goal. Um, so, you know, but for now, uh, the most feasible is the old space where the old kitchen, as you just mentioned, uh, used to be. Is, is that possible for you to do? It's possible for me to do, yeah. I would just have to move a pool table and put up a wall and and you know put the necessary equipment in sinks and and refrigeration and and all that and then after inspection steve he would be able to get that approved if it meets all the qualifications uh yeah he has to he has to get the kitchen plan approved before starting construction okay uh, so that way there aren't any you know some change orders in the middle of it Oh, yeah, you want to keep your costs. Now. I mean, you got to be smart about it. Go to some, you know, well, you're a manager, so you know this. You know, you go to somebody who's done a, a commercial kitchen, get a good plan, go to Steve with it so that he's not saying, no, you needed four sinks. <laughs> you know, we, we need to rip this out here, you know. Right. And then, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, most yeah. of the stuff, yeah, most of the stuff, like I can, I can contact somebody and get that, you know, the ball rolling. Um, it, it was just something that, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that if I were to do just that, put up a wall, get the necessary equipment in, uh, sinks and, and what have you, would that allow me to proceed forward? You know, that's that, if, I, if, that, if you say, if, if, the, if the, it meets the code and if it, um, you have the menu and, and whatnot, then I'm, you have my word, I'm gonna start on that, you know, uh, tomorrow. I will tell you though, here's the thing about the bar issue, okay? It has to be a restaurant that serves alcohol, okay? And it can't be, so it has to, you have to kind of change your business model. And then this isn't, this is just to get you open in this space. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? If this were normal times, it wouldn't matter. But if you, because you know, you know what happened in Northampton and Florence yep. and all I, that, right? This, group, right? this is bigger than Sunderland. <laughs> oh, I know. Okay? Florence I know. allowed that to open and then the state came in and shut it down. Yeah, I, okay. I heard that they had a food truck in the beginning and then they stopped with the food they truck. They had the food truck for like a day. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I don't know. And then they popped popcorn, okay? And then they, they, want, they got hummus and chips and they got some sandwiches. Yeah. So, but it was a bar that had food. You need to be a restaurant that serves alcohol. We can't have people, uh, the Dove's Nest does not have counter seating. You Correct. can't have bar seating. Correct, I know. You know what I mean? So you got to like think about this in a whole new way. You oh, know, you don't have people standing and drinking. You don't yep. have, so if you understand that, mm -hmm then we're on the same page. And that's why okay. I think even last month, even I think I said to Steve, I said, could you please invite him to a board of health meeting? And someone might've mentioned it to you or whatever, but I want to make sure that you're on the same page as us just because I don't want the state. I, I even though I worked for the state for 17 years, I don't want the state coming in. Mm -hmm. I don't want them coming in and looking at us and saying, Sunderland Board of Health, you guys 
I thought you were better than this. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought you guys could read the law better than this. Yeah, we can, and we follow the law. Right. And we try to advise our businesses because we want you to survive. We want you to thrive. And if this were any other time, then we have to follow phases. I, I wouldn't care whether your business model was a bar that serves food or a restaurant that serves alcohol. Mm -hmm. Because of these phases, we have to get very picky. Yeah. So as of your commercial kitchen, as of all of your inspections, you are going to be a restaurant, whether it's a panini restaurant or not, that serves alcohol. Mm -hmm. Until phase four, then you can be a bar that serves sandwiches. Okay. Do you understand? <laughs> I mean, but you have to, act, you have to really act that way. No, I, I, I get it. I mean, I know how technical it is and, um, you know, it, it's, it's something where I'm okay with doing that. You know, obviously even right now, it, it's just about getting open. Um, and you have to be, um, malleable. You have to, you know, shift with it and be able to, uh, ride it out because right now it's, it, it is tough. It is, it, you know, <laughs> we have, we have the blue heron selling groceries. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about a fancy restaurant selling groceries, Yeah. you know? And so I don't mean like, I'm not even saying we have to do this like we're kidding. Do you know what I mean? I actually need you to be a restaurant that sells alcohol. <laughs> no, I'm, I, so, I'm not, I understand exactly what you're saying. But I, we will help you. Yep. Okay, Steve wants to say something. Sure. Just, uh, just a reminder, you're serving more authorities than the Board of Health. The, you need to have a building permit. You, the yeah. fire department may require fire suppression. So, and your, you know, your landlady would probably have to apply for the building permit or at least sign off on it since she owns the property. Yep. So, and we, we can go over that in more details, but if we can get it right the first time, it'll go a lot quicker. Sounds good. But we are here to help you. I promise that. Yep. Well, I, I do appreciate, you know, obviously the time. I appreciate you guys coming together. And, you know, I know you do it every Monday. Um, and, you know, this right now is helping me immensely, like just helping clarify everything to me. And, um, you know, now I know how to proceed. So. Bruce, and yeah, jump in. Yeah, my biggest concern is being one of the only restaurant bars that has food and has a history. I don't want to see it become, you know, a place where people go at nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night, um, you know, and congregate in, you know, because you can drink there and buy a panini or something like that. I think that's the biggest fear we all have. So that's going to take strict guidance on the, on the manager, the owner's part, the bartender's part or whatever. Yep. Um, you know, I just want to be clear about that because I remember the old days when we had a two o'clock license there. Yep. You know, it was crowded. <laughs> well, and I think that maybe, and we'll be talking about this in your application, there, we may have to see a biz, like a type of business model. Yeah. Like we'll work real hard to get you open. <laughs> and we have the, um, you know, and then we'll work hard and we'll see a mask. You know, we got, you got to have to do the mask requirements. You're going to have to follow everything that, the Blue Heron and Bridgeside and everybody else follows. Absolutely. And if they've got to close at a certain time, you got to close at a certain time. If they've got an occupancy requirement, so do you. And, you know, if the police have to drive through, they drive through, you know, like we, that's what we're going to do. And then if we can get you through to phase four, then we got you through to phase four, yeah. you know, but that's what we're, we want to help our businesses. Okay. But Bruce is, a hundred and fifty percent right. Yep. This is not going to be the UMass hangout. It can't be. Yeah, you know, we have our cases. Of our we're keeping our cases low. We're opening our schools in two in a week and a half, and I want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't want you know your older brothers and sisters and your parents coming home and giving it to the kids. The kids bring it into school. <laughs> You know, and that this is all part of our community, and that's what our job is as a board of health is to keep the community healthy. Okay. Okay. I, I sound like a mother, but I am. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. You, uh, you know, do you, if you, but if you need anything, please email us. 
or and keep in contact with Steve because we will help. Okay. And uh, I personally wish you the best of luck too with your endeavors. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'll probably stop in for a beer sometime. Oh, and a sandwich. And a, yeah, no, you're going to stop in for a sandwich. Yeah, and a beer. Then you're going to get a beer. See, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 this, is, this is a change in your business model, Ken. Yep. Just going back in history with the seven O's, that's where I met my wife. And we're still well, there. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just want to say I, I did um, preemptively, obviously, just to try to see what how many uh, tables I took out probably two thirds of my tables. I spread them way far apart. You did the same thing on the on the patio, uh, redid the patio, put a new AC in the in the building. So there's been a lot of put into it uh, preemptively because obviously uh, I, I, I need to have it to be you know comfortable in there if people are going to be dining. So that's great. That's great. And we'll come by. Yep. We'll, yeah, we're, we, we support. And we will all will come by. All right. So Steve, you'll, you'll wait. Yeah, you, okay? you know how to get in touch with me. Yep. Um, you may want to look at a commercial company that can give you a kitchen plan based on the space. Yep. Um, you know, I can't tell you what to do and then approve it. That just, doesn't work. Yeah, we, we looked at that and it just isn't a, it, it's unethical. <laughs> okay. But well, this right. helps me a lot. I do appreciate it. Well, hey. Thanks for taking the time. All right. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Yep. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Yep. Good luck. Thanks. Um, the uh, minutes from July. Uh, I bear with me. better bear with me. I looked them over and uh, uh, if I remember correctly, my was going to suggest that we approve them as we got them. I'm looking for them. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, we'll vote. Um, Three, zero. Uh, hold on, I lost mine somewhere. Well, they're right in front of me, but. I resent them at the end of last week, I think it was. Whenever you asked for them, Bruce. Yeah, I read them. They I resent them to everyone again. Yeah. So again. And Bruce, second, three, zero. Okay. Old business. What do we have for old business? All right, not that. Uh, I have nothing for old business. Does that, Bruce, or uh, Ken, you got anything? I, I believe that the uh, Pondridge uh, condo thing there, that's solved. Yep. Yes. Um, yes, it is. Okay, and, and was there another issue that you mentioned in your notes to us? Uh, oh, there was a, a kind of an ongoing thing at 28 Silver Lane or South Silver Lane, um, but that's just a back and forth between an occupant and um, the landlord. So I've, I've been out a few times, but it seems to have calmed down now. Oh, is that Krems? Yes, it is. So that's more of a landlord tenant issue than a board of health issue. Well, the board, of, the housing court asked that the board of health get involved like six weeks ago. Okay. Um, so I became involved. I wrote orders to correct things were corrected. The last time I was out there, the, the complaining occupant appears to have moved out. Um, but that's not my call. And, and the landlord would have actually have to go to the housing court and probably hold on to her belongings for up to three months. I mean, sometimes we try, they try to pull us in on that, but we don't, I don't have anything to say about that. Nope. So that's kind of where it's at now. Okay. Well, thank you, Gina. Well, Ken. So moving on to the housing health update. 
Oh, wait a minute. Quick on uh, old business. Um, we did get a report from the public health nurse that there is again this month no new COVID-19 cases. Good. So, uh, so that's good. It goes back to May. Knock on wood. We're, we're been clean since May. Um, now, housing health agent update. <laughs> Okay, um, the, you know, we just talked about the two outstanding ones. Um, miraculously, 370 Montague Road, Pond Ridge Condos, completely done. Toilet, new, new floor, new toilet, so that's, that's all done. Um, and I think the only new thing um, is that we, Cindy provided me with a copy of the variance request that, um, Kevin Maynard from Bulkley Richardson is asking the State Building Commission for a variance to the lock and buzzer system at Cliffside. So I think what will happen is um, the, we, the next thing we should hear is a hearing date in Boston for that. And then we'll decide whether uh, we want me to go or send a letter or do anything at all. So. So what, what do they have to do? They have to install automatic locking doors and all the entrance? Yeah, all the common entrances that, that, that house three or more apartments. And they mm -hmm. don't want to do that? They well, they have to run a an opener to every um, apartment. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to buzz in the... Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So they're looking for variants to not do that. And, and we I, can't... We couldn't... Well, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they, you know, we were giving them suggest, you know, they could do unwired, they could do wired. I mean, they, there's lots of different ways they could have done it, but they wanted a variance. Yeah. And we it's can't. Not to, it's not to retrofit it versus no. new construction. Yeah. So, so that's what's out of our hands. Okay. Right. Yep. Can I ask Steve a question? Sure. Um, the new apartments down there, Steve, the uh, septic system that they're putting in, do we have anything to do with that approval or is that at the state level also? Um, that's, they are essentially putting in a small sewage treatment system, which is regulated by the state. Okay, so we, we have nothing we, to do with that. We don't have any input or or control or anything over that that's and all that's, approved that's dep that's in charge of that yes okay thank you you're welcome are they open yet i don't believe yes so. oh I, I think they have yeah. they have a sign out on 116 now renting or something to that effect uh, they moved in last weekend wow all the kids moved in last weekend because we got a few calls from parents asking about what our jurisdiction was and <laughs> we needed to provide move-in service so there weren't so many people there and that we needed to be monitoring and all that sort of thing. So they're in. Saw the line of cars on the on Saturday and Friday moving in there. Our and jurisdiction? Under you mean like we're supposed to be monitoring their mask usage? All of it, because they feel that they're living in there under the aegis of UMass. And I said, well, we, we don't control that either. That's all under UMass. And these are privately rented um, properties. So, oh boy, you know, and obviously we've worked with the other facilities to make sure that they have the proper information that they might need for their residents, but we don't do the monitoring or anything like that. So... <laughs> Yeah. So they want their kids to go, but they still want us to watch their children. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> when we do get involved, then they blame us. Of course. <laughs> well, I think what they want us to do is enforce the rules against everybody else's children. And oh, yeah. there, right. So theirs will be that's, safe. Yeah, that's exactly what the, the situation was. You know, I know what my child is going to do, and how do we make all the others wear masks? Right. There we go. Yeah, because your kid's not going to throw the mask away and grab the beer. Yeah. Right. 
And I understand as of a week before that, there were only one of two apartments left available. Oh, gosh. Oh, my now, And I don't know if that includes the affordable housing site or not. The website kind of doesn't clarify, but it looks like they're full. Wow. Yeah, just that fast. They were, they, I understand they were given two weeks to find off campus housing for their students, their, their kids. Oh, because the dorms aren't open? Pretty much. I think they're open very limited. Oh, no, there's, yeah, there's only yes. three, there's only 3,000 uh, kids. Right. I, I was told there was uh, 750 kids from a UMass employee that works there. Yeah. Yeah. But I think total is going to be less than 3,000. Right. On yep. a campus that holds 30 or something. So. Yeah. And all, those, so all, they, those, all the classrooms are um, virtual, virtual, right? Virtual. Right. I believe so. Yeah. So they were, they're all, you know, living in the surrounding community, even if they're virtual. It's. They're all in Sunderland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> it's all right. They're, 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 you know, come on. I mean, it's it's We're good for the complex community. Yeah, it'll be fine. I I have a question to ask everybody. Okay. Um, concerning uh, the wearing of a mask and everything, um, I I happen to be going to the uh, corner store, and a gentleman came in as I was leaving without a mask, and he has it posted. On his door, mask will be worn inside. Now, should I have said something to that gentleman while I was in there or not? I think you have the authority to say something to him, Ken, but I wouldn't say anything to him because some of these people can go off the deep end about it. Yep. And, and you know, I think that's up to the person, individual people. He, is, he was right next to me. Yeah, it, I mean, literally right next to me, less than two feet away. Thank you. I, you know, I had my mask on, but yeah, you might have made a comment to him in the passing. But that's how I do. It. Yeah, well, I just need some feedback. Yeah, it is. It's a personal decision. Um, but yeah, I, I may not have said anything. It depends on the day. Yeah. <laughs> I understand totally. <laughs> I'm up here in New York State. And when I say I'm in New York State, I'm up in the middle of no place in New York, kind of. And the people are very, very good about wearing their masks. I mean, I don't care what they are or anything else, but just about everybody has a mask on. You know, I've seen, I don't think I've seen anybody in a business. And it's, it's, I think when the people don't put their mask on when they're going into a business or something, there's an issue with that person. Everybody stops and stares. Yeah. No, that's that's my feeling. So. Yeah. That's good. So Gina, what? Um, it looks like uh, what Mawson's? Yeah. Oh no, that was way back in July. Okay. So that's it. You only had those two things. We we're done with you. You're done with me, but I'll hang in. <laughs> okay, that's good. No, that's great. Um, uh, Steve? Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped forward with the public nurse thing. Sorry. Uh, housing health agent update. Have we been, I, I noticed we got a, uh, an email today regarding a plan. A site, a, uh, a L U A. You needed you needed uh, triangulation points on a plan today. Oh, you're talking to me. You were addressing Gina as the housing health agent. Oh no, I switched to Steve. Oh, okay. I said Steve, health oh. agent. I um, must have been a computer I, glitch. Zoom. No, I'm no, I just Sorry. wasn't clear. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so. Things have been relatively busy. I uh, have done a couple since the previous meeting, a couple Title V inspections and one reinspection, a couple of perks, uh, a couple of final inspections. 
I uh, drove to Indiana to drop my daughter off at college and had to quarantine for when I got back. Yeah. So, yeah, the further west you go, the, you think mask use here is mm, less than 100%. Uh, she's just waiting for Indiana to close. There seems to be a general thing. Uh, flouting of the flouting, flaunting of the uh, regulations. Anyway, uh, we have one um, uh, Title V. Who keeps trying to bug in? Oh, that's um, twice. Some... Anyway, um, there's one repair plan for 221 uh, Russell Street and the designer has requested a local upgrade approval to reduce the separation from the bottom of the leaching stone to groundwater from five feet to four feet. Um, the so that requires a vote by the board. The plan itself is not approved yet. There's a couple of details that still need to be worked out, like you know where to actually put the leach field because the designer forgot to mark that on the plan. But uh, anyway, approving this should have no adverse impact on human health, safety, or the environment. Where's, where's 221 Russell Street? Just kind of refresh my uh, down towards Hadley Road. It's a it's a ranch setback. Uh, as you're going, like a flat roof. Uh, no, it's not a flat roof. Okay. It's, um, and this is so they don't have to have a raised system, Steve. Well, they still have to have a raised system. Actually, a considerably high raised system, but. Basically, the system that was in put in originally with a house never worked a day in it in its life. It was set in groundwater and tight soils, and uh, so this this system is going to uh, it'll the reduction will go from five feet to four feet because of the fast perk rate. So it'll reduce the height of the mound. And it is the five feet a Sunderland Board of Health stipulation, or is that Title V? Uh, that's a state stipulation based on the perk rate slower than two minutes per inch, or okay. faster than two minutes per inch. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. But that won't hurt the water table or anything else? No. Okay. That's, yeah, that's my typical answer, my typical question is you know how, there's no effect to the water table no effect to the neighbors no effect to the... no it's all it's in an area of town water so there are no wells affected um okay. all right um uh well i'm gonna make a motion for the uh to approve the local upgrade for 221 russell street seconded okay uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, three zero for the local upgrade approval for 221 Russell Street. And Steve. just wait on that until all of the plans are approved. Yeah, one, yes. uh, I'll sign off on it once the plan's approvable. Okay. Steve, were, okay. The, were the perk tests for, for new construction of new houses or were they people with systems that have to be redone? This is for repair, new construction. All the court tests were for repairs. It wasn't for new houses. Right. New construction is not eligible for local upgrade approvals. It okay, but I mean, focused. you said you did two perk tests. Oh, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, they were both for repairs. Repairs? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I haven't done anything in Sunderland for new construction for a while. Okay. That's a plus. Um... Oh, a review of the Board of Health fees. Um, Cindy, did you send out an email? Yes, did. No, I went to their websites and looked up their fee schedules. And um, did you, do you have them? 
Did you? They're on my computer. Did I not include those? I, I don't. I got them. You did. I oh, think it was I in the them. original email. Ah. Bottom of the page, right? Yeah, that, you scroll down, there was a bunch of attachments there. What yes. I yeah, I got them right in front of me. Okay. Uh, Deerfield, Hadley, Hatfield, and Leverett. I thought I saw. And also Amherst. All right. So you guys can start. To... Can, can we put that off? Because I really didn't review them. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll table that uh, until uh, next month. Okay, yeah, and I'll see if I can get a little bit more detail. Some of them, um, it was interesting. Some things came out under different departments. So you had to look all those up too. Not all of them offer the same things because we all don't offer the same types of services like hotels or bed and breakfasts and things like that. So some of them might not be applicable to everybody. And I, I did do Waitley also, and I'm not sure I actually included that on there because they um, go together with Williamsburg and another town. So they have way different service requirements than a lot of what we do. Mm -hmm. They were all pretty comparable, I will say, in price to what we are. But all I, right. Did you find that, yeah, Caitlin? I did. Okay, good. The only, the only thing I um, would like to uh, saw on that information, thank you, Cindy, by the way, uh, was uh, what's uh, but what we're Sunderland in that situation on these uh, prices and stuff. But Sunderland, that was one of the attach. It was a different attachment than the other fees. Oh. Because I couldn't get them all to fit on the same page. Yep. And make it make some somewhat sense. I took Sunderland's um, invoice sheet. I actually changed it. I, I didn't change. I changed the format a little bit, which makes it easier for me to email folks since we're doing a lot of things remote. And then I took that same format and I duplicated it for the other towns that I queried. And so you should have one for Sunderland, and then the other one is all the other towns. Yep. Well, I don't see it so. Not in your packet. Well, that's okay. Well, I can get that to you. <laughs> so I can try to get more fees if you all want. Um, I, I don't know. All right. And um, I can talk to Steve about some of the nuances for a hauler, a septic hauler versus awful services and things like that. Some call them different things. We call it all one thing so mm -hmm. well I personally think you did a marvelous job and thank you very much you're welcome thank you all right um all right and there's no um I'll come back to you guys I'm I'm reading I'm back. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's no, um, there's no legal fees. With the revolving fund right now. No, we haven't seen any legal fees come in at all. So, okay. I don't know what that's about, but we haven't incurred any. But we probably will a little bit soon, right, Gina? Probably. Because of. Know. Yeah, maybe a little, but. Um, yeah. One thing I forgot to mention, excuse me for this, but if you know, didn't notice on my report, I forgot to mention that se remember 75 Russell Street, the ex mm. uh, apartment above the garage. Yes. The, yes. the very next day after our last meeting on July 23rd, um, I got a call from a plumber, um, Scott Bauer, and he went in and removed all the plumbing. Everything was gone like by that july 24th that weekend right. so um that would that oh no that wasn't the legal one anyways i'm sorry i forgot to mention that but that's done zipped up no more apartment there okay. or office or anything else um the legal fees if you recall we had jeff blake working on some paperwork if the mossons didn't get that toilet installed right, right. We'll probably so, he had started to do the motion 
and I contacted him the minute I heard. So we might have a few bucks there, but it didn't go all the way. Okay. Okay. The other. Oh, sorry. Note on 75 Russell Street. Did that sale go through or not? No. Well, not to my knowledge. The for sale signs still out there. Okay. Yeah, I think it fell through. Um, the other thing is, is we might need, um, we're going to have to figure out more money for the public health nurse. Um, because we're going to, any positive cases that come up through the school are going to have to have contact tracing. And this, we, I had a meeting this afternoon with the nurse manager for the Frontier Regional <coughs> Schools, and the, the school nurses aren't going to do that. So our public health nurse is going to have to, and we pay her by the you know, um, But, uh, you know, she contracted, but we, we, we contracted to pay her by the hour. <laughs> you know, like, so, um, but I'm also going to apply for, you know, we're going to try to apply for more if, if it's passed in Washington and we get another package, um, you know, more grant money to help the local boards of health pay for anything COVID related. So that's how we've been supplementing her MAVEN coverage, um, which luckily we haven't had, knock on wood. <laughs> uh, but anything she did do, we paid for and it didn't affect our budget. So hopefully, um, you know, anything that comes from the schools, we're gonna, it, it's gonna, any monitoring, any phone calls, anything like that is gonna come out of our budget. Uh -huh. The public health nurse. Um, so uh, we're gonna have to think about that a little bit. <laughs> What's the requirement for being a, con uh, a contact tracer? Do you have to be a public health nurse or a RN or whatever? No, um, but there's a training. Um, you, can, you can be either one with the state. Um, we have found them to be less than desirable. Um, some communities are using them uh, and they are not doing a very good job. Deerfield has pretty much only used them in an emergency, their their uh, their nurse is doing all their contact train uh, contact tracing them herself, and Cheryl's doing ours. Uh, Cheryl, I believe, is doing all of Montague's uh, because the ones that are being trained by the state are not even not even not medical professionals. They're not even medically. They don't so. They get trained in like a list, a list of questions, but they don't know how to link them to reality. Um, so they don't know what they're asking. Um, so when people ask them a question or come up with a scenario or something to them, they, they don't, they don't know how to answer them. And then they also start asking either inappropriate questions or non hip they, They're really not doing a good job. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of. Um, but if someone who's in, uh, but you mean like, you know, it's, it's, it's an, it's an, it's an interesting scenario, but there it has not been working out very well. Let's leave it at that. Uh, we had some complaints from the police department in Deerfield about one of their officers we contacted and he was like a man with a man. Um, the board of health. Uh, so we're sticking to our nurses. But I'm just going to try to get some funding. Um, but for now, knock on wood, it, it hasn't been. It, it not much has happened. So we're going to keep yep. it that. Well, but, best of luck to you, Caitlin. I'm trying to get us if there is some more money out there available for the COVID to help the town out. Yeah, I'll find it. Okay. I um, will do a, we'll look, everyone want to look at their calendars. Is there any uh, September date that's no good for anybody? Let me see. 
cheating on the calendar. It's a holiday. One day's a holiday, isn't it? Labor Day. Well, yeah. Seventh is a holiday. Um, you want to look at the 21st or the 28th? Is anybody? 21st is best for me. Early in the month, yeah. Yeah. It's fine with me. Okay, the 21st. Same bat time. Same bat channel. Unless things change. Okay. Guys, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. And thank I you. guess we'll close the meeting at 6.56. Boy, this was a